Yeah. Tell you what I could do. Yeah. It's not going to be. I've never noticed. I've never noticed. Yeah. Have you got a cigarette? Yeah. yeah. No. So I'll take them over. Okay. <laughs> David, you just want to pass this up through your coat? Yeah, sure. Okay. It's, it's, it's been very good, yeah, yeah. As long as it's not more than once a year, I can do it. <laughs> I'm terribly excited. I'm very excited. Yes. I think he's working with um, Graham. Isn't he working with Graham Parker? Mm -hmm. He was, and he's, uh, he's real excited about uh, this, this stream that he's working with. He's got a 24 track. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah, I haven't heard any of them. He invited me down tomorrow night. Yeah, to hear it. yeah. Really yeah, they're worth hearing. They're good. They really are good. His, Carlos's own background comes into it. His, uh, the Hispanic kind of thing is, it's, it's very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay. It's really quite left field. I mean, it's, yeah. I, it was different from that which I expected him to do. It's good. It's good stuff. We should do very well with it, I think. You went to Italy with it first. Uh, that I didn't know. Yeah. That's a strange one. I would have thought, I can understand why not coming to the United States first. Yeah. But, uh, I would have thought England first. So yeah. I was disappointed with him with Graham. I don't know if, if you actually went to see Graham when he was playing. I, I, believe it or not, I've been working so hard that I just haven't seen... Well, the only things I've seen recently are uh, True West off Broadway, which was great. Have you seen that? No. It's a wonderful. The uh, Shepherd, Sam Shepherd play. Fabulous. That's really good. Um, kind of cut. I saw 20 minutes of Smithereens. <laughs> which 20? I hate it. <laughs> I really loved it. Um, have you seen, did you see that? What did you think? Does it develop? I mean, uh, for me, I, I, it was the lack of development that... Well, you see, that's, I think, is such an easy stance to adopt. I think a nihilist stance is... You can't still be intrigued by that. I mean, that's a, it's a... It's a forlorn statement that was made so long ago, and there's nothing new you can say about that one. Yeah. But it wasn't even verbally idiosyncratic enough to hold your interest. The conversation, the dialogue drive, was not as though watching like an improvisation from an early Scorsese movie or something. You know, there wasn't the uh, rapport and, and friction. It, it, it was just nothing really. I thought True West was, was really good, a really good production. Mal Malkovich was really good. Yeah, he's terrific. Yeah. Can't see him that name anymore. No, yeah. Can't see Are you in a bad rotation? I mean, it's well, the, we, we tape. Yeah. But oftentimes the taping schedule is such that I wind up not only being there early in the morning, yeah. through one or two. Yeah, yeah, sure. But then also late at night. Yeah. So that I get out at 8.15. Yeah. It's just late enough to not make it. So yeah. That's a or not want to make it. Uh, it's a really long day. We just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK, Mark, we're rolling. We're ready to rock? OK. <laughs> you mentioned first off during the press conference that the new record was your most optimistic yet. Yes, yeah. What do you mean by that? Um, 
I don't know. What did I mean, Mark? <laughs> I'm asking the questions, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you some punishing questions a bit later? Be my guest. Right. Okay, I'll come back to this one then. Um, it's, uh, I, it occurred to me that a lot of things that I've done, um, though I wouldn't uh, uh, deny them, have been um, pretty much uh, in a direction of um, singularity and isolationist and quite cold. Um, and I just felt that having been two years since I've been away from the recording studio, it occurred to me, listening back to my own music and seeing what's happening in modern music at the moment, that I wanted to do something with the kind of warmth that I feel missing from um, music generally and, 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 and from society. Um, that sounds like a very overblown statement. Indeed it is. What I'm trying to say is that it's probably one of the warmer things that I've done. I was going to, it sounds like a relatively, relative. relatively, that's the important word. Here. Yeah, I, I guess there'll always be something spiky about my stuff, but it's, there's a, but I think uh, a wanting to r uh, integrate back into society, in, uh, is, that comes through, I think that becomes apparent. Would this all come out of things that have been happening to you personally? Of course, yes. Say what if there was any one thing that might have happened that might have well happened? I met her on a Sunday and my heart yeah, stood still <laughs> yeah <laughs> now I wish I could say that but that never happened either uh, but uh, I, I've, I just felt a lot more balanced about my uh, personal life about uh, musically I, I um, rekindled the kind of enthusiasm I think that I had um, ten years ago when I wanted to start really making music but I think it's more positive for me uh, the uh, outlook is positive. I wanted to, if I was going to even bother writing anything anymore, that I, I would really want to contribute something um, optimistic and positive. Do you have a title for the album? Um, tentatively, yes. But uh, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll probably uh, go with it completely. Well, I would hate to put out a working title and then not, because that gets confusing. I think uh, probably we'll really decide by the end of this week what it is. I, of course, will let you know first. We'd appreciate yes. it. Yes. What about, uh, some, if you won't give us the LP title, some song titles? Well, it's not a question of not giving it. I'd love to give it to you, but there are three, and we're going to settle on one by the end of this week. And it'd be confusing if I give you all three, so. Okay. How about, some, how about a song title or two? I, I heard that, uh, that you've chosen to rework Cat People on the record. That was one of the ideas, yes. Um, Does that not happen? Well, uh, I, we did a number of things, and a uh, final decision on that, and which ones we're actually going to put out, uh, again, it'll be at the end of the week. Who's producing the record? Myself and uh, Niall Rogers from Chic, um, and uh, occasionally uh, Bernard Edwards stepped in to listen. Mm -hmm. How did you decide on, on that sort of a production team, rather than how I described to you? Uh, well, I, it's... Uh, because I wanted to redefine everything I did, I think I also wanted to be in a position where I didn't know the people that I was working with, to redevelop the kind of enthusiasm and, and, and slight panic that you have when you're not sure how the other person is going to react to any situation. Um, I, I had many, many wonderful experiences working with uh, Carlos and Dennis Davis and George Murray, um, but. I really wanted to start working with new people so that, because it, you kind of get to a position as a musician where if you have an idea and you know your musicians that you're working with too well, um, there's a signal going on over there, sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. That's right. <laughs> um, the, the, there, comes, uh, there comes a point where if you know your musicians too well, you can almost predict the way they're going to interpret or play something. Mm -hmm. And that takes, for me personally, it takes some of the fascination of making music away. I like to be kind of really surprised each time. Who, you mentioned musicians, and I yeah. was going to ask you about them anyway. Yeah. You, you oh, going back to Niall, why, why Niall? I mean, <laughs> Niall, well, I met Niall in a club a few months ago. Um, we started talking about uh, music, and, and we got back inevitably to rhythm and blues, where uh, all musicians get back to, however elitist they seem from superficially. Um, and we had exactly the same taste in, in uh, uh, early rhythm and blues and uh, guitarists and big bands and whatever from that period. And it just struck me at that point, I said, God, it'd be great to maybe work with him. I wonder if that gives us any clue as to what the album may ultimately sound like. Well, I can tell you that uh, lead guitarist is Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, who is, for me, just about the, the greatest of the new blues guitarists around. I saw him uh, working in a, a jazz concert in Europe and he was like second on the bill or something, and he just 
this little kid from Austin, Texas, came out and just played some of the most devastating city rhythm and blues I've, I've heard in years. It was great. Who else is on the record? Um, Carmine Rojas, who at the moment works, I think, very much with Nona. Um, and uh, Robbie Sabino on keyboards, who works with Niall. And uh, a horn lineup of uh, New York guys. Oh. New York guys. New York guys. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's been a while. You, you mentioned this, I think, before we wrote the paper. It's, it's been a while since you put out a record. Yeah, two years. Yeah. Why now have you decided to? come back to rock and roll? Well, frankly, uh, one of the biggest reasons is that uh, I feel that I've got the kind of encourage. I've just uh, signed with a new label, EMI America, and it's given me the kind of encouragement and freedom that I've not had for one reason or another in a very long time. And uh, it's, it's great to have this, uh, that kind of support and enthusiasm for what one does. That's really great. <laughs> Plus, of course, uh, this new optimism that you're talking about. That's yeah. Really yeah. I, I wonder. Uh, the last record was had at least certain aspects that were very retrospective. This one moves forward for us. Mm. This, this LP. I think okay, uh, eclectically, it's a it's a pretty much a mixed bag, and there's no no doubt that it still has a very strong European influence. But that's naturally going to come about through the way I write. Um, but it's uh, fundamentally trying to regain the same kind of immediacy and excitement that uh, one feels with one's old record collection. You always go back and say, those were the good old days. Well, I'm sure there's a way of saying, well, those were the good old days, and this is how you recapture that feeling and put it out uh, um, outside of oneself and not just have it lying dormant in there as though this is something that can never happen again. That's a great shame, and, and I'd like to try and tap that energy source again. That's really exciting. I hope, I hope you can do that. Well, you know, we'll have a go. Whatever happened to the Bowie personas that we used to see with each oh, record? Oh, finished in 76, I guess, all that. You know. Why? You know that. Why, though? What, what happened to them? They, um, uh, they just, it was a confuser cat. Uh, <laughs> 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 I just, I just, uh, I, I, I was uh, too, a uh, confused lad. Stereotype mixed up pop star. What about a tour? Everyone is waiting. Um, okay, you can come, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm starting mid-year sometime, and it'll be a world tour. I don't know which territory first, but uh, obviously America uh, uh, will be part of it. And I'll do Europe and uh, the Far East as well. It'll be the first one for seven years, uh, six, six years over here, seven years in Europe. Mm -hmm. Are there going to be, uh, a lot of people lately have been picking Bombay and South Africa and here and there, they've been going to some wild places to do concerts. Do you have anything like that? Uh, yeah, there are two or three places that are just purely for my own uh, um, curiosity and selfish reason that I'm probably going to play, but I'd rather not try really talk about them until they come off because they're, they're sort of quite... <laughs> More signals. More signals. All right. Uh, um, 30, 15, your serve. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you who you like in the game Sunday, but that's... Uh, I like the Redskins, but the, the, the Dolphins are going to win. I rather. I was floored when the Jets dropped out. Right. Crushed. Crushed. Um, one more question about the new record, and then I, w I want to find uh, out if, if David Bowie has a, a long-range sort of a plan in mind. A lot of video, I understand, for the new record. Yeah, yeah. If that's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> well, I was gonna what I was going to ask was one, what you have in mind, if there is anything specific. What, what I'll now do is I'll go, I'll go away for a month and devise storyboards and then decide which cameraman and um, lighting people I want to work with and pull the team together and uh, uh, a co-director for the technical aspects of it. Will David Mallard be involved again? Uh, that I, I, I don't know. I've, there's a selection of people that have expressed really strong interest in working with him. One other thing that you mentioned during the conference was directing, you said. Yes. Yeah, to a greater or lesser extent, I hope to do something um, possibly in early part of 84. Mm -hmm. But it, it'll be on a small scale and video and uh, of a short duration, 20, 30 minutes. Okay, and they're giving me a signal for the last question. If you can, a three-year plan, you have a record, you have so many projects that we, we didn't even get a chance to touch on yeah. that will be happening soon, some that we've heard that are further off in the yeah. distance. What kinds of things would you like to see happen for you over the next three years? Oh, God. Uh, I stopped thinking around January 84. and, and 
on positive ventures. I mean, it's, I'd hate to close myself up off to um, the possibilities of what I might or might not do after But all that. that does is tell us that you're going to release this record and go on tour. It's very hard to think past that, you know. I mean, there's such a lot of work involved to pull that whole thing together. The tour especially, I've got to start designing the, the staging for that and whatever, and it, it just takes up time. I haven't got any time to think about all this future stuff, you know. It's really difficult. I've got to get a breakfast in the morning. What about those punishing questions you were going to ask me? Well, yeah, do you have the time? <laughs> We've got nothing to do. Ah, they did me out of me big chance. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you probably know what was going to come anyway. Yeah. We have plenty of time. I don't know, it's up to you, it's up to you guys. I'd like to ask you something. I'm so, you know, all right. Um, it, it occurred to me, having watched MTV over the last few months, um, that it's, it, uh, it's, got, it's a solid enterprise with it and it's got a lot going for it. I'm just floored by the fact that there's so, many bl so few black artists featured on it. Why is that? I think that we're trying to move in that direction. We want to play artists that seem to be doing music that fits into what we want to play for MTV. There's th the company is thinking in terms of narrow casting. That's evident. Um, it's evident in the fact that the only few black artists that one does see are on about 2.30 in the morning or, in, or to around 6. Very few are featured predominant, no. predominantly during the day. No, that, uh, that's a I'll say that over the last couple of weeks these things have been changing, but it, it's, no, uh, it's a I slow know. process. I know, it's, it's funny, I think people have different perceptions. When you wind up watching, let's say you watch an hour or two or even three a day, People somehow come away with different ideas about what we are doing. We don't have any kind of day parting for anything, mm. let alone a black artist day parted out of what, what would be, quote, prime time. Mm. We don't have that. Because one sees a lot on the, on the there's a, one black station on uh, television that I keep picking up. I'm not sure which station it's on. But there's a, there seem to be a lot of black artists making very good videos that I'm surprised aren't used on MTV. Well, uh, of course, also we have to try and do what we think not only New York and Los Angeles will appreciate, but also uh, Poughkeepsie or the Midwest, pick some town in the Midwest that will be scared to death by Prince, which we're playing, or a string of other black faces. That's black very music. interesting. Isn't that interesting? You know, we, have to, uh, we have to play the music that we think an entire country is going to like, and certainly we're a rock and roll station now. The question would be asked, well, should, uh, since we're in New York, should PLJ play, uh, you know, uh, the Isley Brothers? Well, you and I might say, yeah, because we have grown up in an era when the Isley Brothers mean something to me, and so do the Spinners, even way after the Isley Brothers. But what does it mean to a 17-year-old? Well, if you talk on the phones to these guys like I did when I was in radio, it's Well, I'll tell you what it means. i tell you what maybe the Isley Brothers or Marvin Gaye means to a black 17-year-old. And surely he's part of America as well, no isn't question, he? No question. And that's why you're seeing those things. Do you not find that it's a frightening predicament to be in? Yeah, but less so here than in radio. And is it not? Well, no, don't say. Well, it's not me. It's them. Is it? No, is it not? Is it not possible that it's? It's. It should be a conviction of the station and of other radio stations. Mm. To be fair, it, it is. It does seem to be um, uh, rampant through American media. Um, is it, it? Should it not be a challenge to try and? make the media far more integrated in those in music, happening. especially of anything in musical terms. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think it's happening because white music and white musicians are now starting to play more than ever, what, uh, more than they have lately, let's say, in the last 10 years, Yeah. what, what black artists have been into. Mm -hmm. And now, hopefully, the lines are going to start to, to blur. And when we play a band like ABC, yeah. well, there's, there's white and black kids who are enjoying it, and all of a sudden, well, it's, it's a little bit easier for a white kid to understand it. The fact is, quite frankly, I, I could even point you towards a letter in the new issue of The Record, yeah. the magazine The Record, responding to an article by Dave Marsh that this, this kid just ranted about what he didn't want to see on MTV. Well, that's and, his and problem. In no uncertain terms, well, what I'm saying, though, is that there's, as you say, there's certainly a, a lot of black kids and white kids who may want to see black music. Mm. There's a ton of them who are 
it's not like it was in 67 where he said, yeah, I'm, I'm not into that, you know, but you are, yeah. Now it's, you're into that? I don't like you. And that's scary, and we, can, we can't just turn around and go, well, look, this is the right way. We can only teach, I think, a little bit at a time. Interesting. Okay, thank you very much. Does that make sense? Is that a point? I understand your point of view. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it's, yeah, it's, it's a tough I know, I know. I just thought, I, because it's going to be uh, sooner or later, it's just interesting, and I wanted to know what, what the response would be there. Well, because there's, there's never been any kind of I tell you what's racist, can, like, can we I don't want to play black artists, period. We want to play rock and roll. I just know that from the... Also, it's also where cable is. It's where the, where the cable... Now the urban markets have been wired then. It's all suburban markets. So we had a choice be between an R&B station or AOL <laughs> station. We want the AOL station. Hopefully, we'll have an R&B station. It's, it's, it's uh, foremost on my mind, of course, because of the guys especially I've been working with recently who are very hostile to uh, the media. Mm. Um, in, in no small way. I mean, they really think that it's, uh, it's, it's a bad deal at the moment. And it hasn't been like this in years. But on the other hand, I feel, I feel posit positive about it because I see another swing happening. Mm -hmm. There is a new yeah. thing happening. Well, I mean, I'm sure you can yeah. understand that if you make a left-hand turn and say, well, we've been playing rock and roll, but now we're going to play uh, you know, the Commodores and we're going to play all these, these bands that black radio like this. Yeah, but let's face it, somebody laid down the ground rules in the beginning. There's a, you know, there should be no reason why it has to change. It should have been there. Yeah. We're dealing with David, uh, thank you. a huge company. Yeah, sure. <laughs>